So this morning we're going to talk about the lemon, the versatile lemon. But before we start, we're going to have prayer, all right? So Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us and that you have given to us. And you've given this wonderful little magic fruit called the lemon, and we're grateful for it. Guide us now as we learn, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning we're going to talk about the lemon. And we call this presentation the versatile lemon because a lot of times people think, oh, a lemon just for lemonade, without the sugar, of course. But there's many uses. Now, typically here at, at the Wellness Center, um, people will come and by the end of the day, they see this bucket. It's full of lemon peelings, right, on the outside because we cut the lemon, we juice them. It's like, what a waste. At my home, when I'm doing um, lemons, either for my family or other people, I can end up with a lot of lemons. And it's like, what do you do with all these lemons? So we're going to show you today just a few ideas of things that you can do with lemons that can be useful to you. Okay, there's ways that we can use lemons outside the body and ways inside the body. Well, obviously, the inside, we know that we're going to drink it, and it, uh, there's other ways that can help us, too. Um, but on the outside of the body, there's hair, the skin, personal care, insect bites, laundry, and a disinfectant. So we're going to start with the hair. So you can take a fresh lemon. I guess men can do this, too, but ladies. You could take the lemon, and you could actually, if you put it on your hair, on, when you wash your hair, and then take, and just make, take the juice, squeeze it, and put it over your hair. If you go out in the sunlight, it's going to lighten it. If you stay very long out in the sunlight, more than 20 minutes, it could damage your hair. But it's a natural way of lightening your hair if you wanted to lighten it. If you want to do highlights on your hair, you can just take it even with a paintbrush or something, and you can just make your own little, it'll just lighten it a little bit if you go out in the sun. All right, so that's just an easier way. But you can also use it to add shine. You shampoo, condition your hair as usual, then you would take the juice of a lemon and you put it on your hair when it's wet. All right, and then you just leave it on there. Again, you don't want to wait for more than 20 minutes, but leave it on for about 20 minutes and then rinse it with water. Now, if you're going to leave it longer than that, you could damage it because remember, as we've learned, that the lemon is very acidic right out here. But because of the mineral content in it, when we drink it and when it gets to our stomach, it becomes very alkaline. So it starts the process of alkalinizing our body and our stomach, all right? So if you're going to use it on your hair for, a, um, for shine, and it works well for adding shine to your hair, just remember that you're not leaving it on for more than like, like 20 minutes at a time. Um, and the same thing is, you know, if you go outside to lighten your hair, um, don't go outside for more than, more than 20 minutes either. But it will add, it's not like going and getting Clairol or nice and easy or whatever it is and putting it on your hair and making it really blonde. It doesn't have that effect, but it will lighten it. Okay? Yes? So when you go out in the sun, you're going out in the sun, you're lightening your hair with the lemon, mm -hmm. you're out there 10 minutes, you come back in and wash it all off with this before 20 minutes. Very good question. So the question was, when you put it on your hair and you go outside to lighten it, and if you stay outside for 10 minutes in the sun, should you come back in for another 10 minutes to equal the 20 and then wash it? So what you should do is you can go out for 20 minutes. I would start probably with 10 minutes first. But if you go out for 20 minutes and then come in and just wash it off your hair, you just rinse it, rinse it well. You don't even have to use shampoo after that. You can just rinse it at that point in time. Um, but it's important that you don't stay much longer because you don't want to damage the hair. But there's good things, good properties for it too. Okay, you can also use it for a face wash. But it's very important that you only use it as a face wash at night. Because if you do it during the day and you're going to put the lemon on your face, and if you go outside, obviously the sun can react with, with the lemon. It could make your skin dry, it could get blotchy, it could even get scaly. So what do you do? It's pretty cool, actually. You can cut the lemon and juice it, and then you take the juice, and you can add some salt, some sugar, or honey, um, and then you take and you would wash. It can be a scrub for your face. Now, if you take the lemon juice and mix it with honey, that's not a scrub, but it's almost more like a, uh, a mask. In fact, I wash my hair at night with honey all the time. I have a, a different thing that I use in the morning that I make with oatmeal and baking soda, but at night I wash it with honey. You just, you know, just take and put honey, but we're talking about lemon. But if you take the lemon with some honey, 
that is more of a, of a mask, but you wouldn't leave it on. Just put it on for a little bit and then rinse it off. But for a scrub, you can take, there's one of two ways. You can juice the lemon, put it in a dish, and put salt or sugar in it, and then just wash your face and then rinse off very well. Or you can just take, like this one has a couple of seeds here, just remove the seeds, sprinkle some salt on it, sprinkle sugar. You, you want to add, on this one I'd probably put a half, to, a half teaspoon or so of salt or sugar. And just, you can just scrub your face here, and then rinse off. But what time do you do this? At night, don't do this during the daytime, all right, because our skin can really absorb it and you don't want to, um, to go outside with that on it. So, but if you're going to use it um, to exfoliate, actually, you could leave it on for even 10 or 15 minutes to exfoliate the skin. And then just rinse off well. Um, feels good and um, your, your skin will feel really, really clean because it's natural. If you have very sensitive skin, like I do, I can't go for 10 minutes at all. I can just go for a short period of time. But if you just keep doing it, you can gradually build it up. You can gradually build up. All right? Um, the big thing on this one is don't, remember, don't use it in the morning. Okay? Even if, even if you um, have darker skin, like some people have really, really dark skin, that it can be a good lightener for that. But that can really damage the skin if you're going out in the sun with it. So it's really not recommended that you do that. All right? Okay, another one is, and this sounds crazy, but it really works, is for dry skin. Has anybody ever heard of lemon oil? Okay. Where do we get lemon oil from? Lemons. lemons. And which part of the lemons do we get lemon oil from? From right here. So after you have taken your lemons and you've juiced the lemons, you know, if you just take and you just mush them around on the outside, okay, I'm not getting the stuff from the inside, some of the lemons I took from in there had been juiced really dry, really well. This one wasn't. Um, some of them were really wet inside. But you, you can just, typically with a lemon before you cut it, you know, you can roll it and make it soft on the outside. So this is already becoming moist. That is lemon oil. And it's a very natural lubricant. Because if we're putting lotion on our face, on our skin, on our body, which I know, especially in the winter, it gets very dry, that actually plugs the pores all right, which prevents us from actually detoxing because one of the biggest ways we detox is through our skin. So if you take and you rub it, like I've got, quite, you can see the shine on there now, that's the lemon oil. Or you can just, you know, rub it and do this and that's, it really works on your hands. Um, these should have been done right away as soon as it, they were cut and they would have a lot more. Um, but you can use it on the outside just rubbing gently. It's a natural oil. Um, you can also use it as a deodorizer. In the refrigerator, you would take your lemons, you know, and cut them in like fourths and just leave them open, stick them on a plate or a dish without a cover on it and put it in the refrigerator. Lemons will absorb the odors in the refrigerator um, or in a cupboard or even, even in a room. They can absorb it there. Okay, so you can also brush your teeth with it. Take the lemon juice again. Do not take the lemon just like this and just go rubbing on your teeth. Remember, lemons are corrosive and it can hurt the enamel on your teeth. But if you take some lemon juice, mix it with some baking soda. Baking soda is an excellent, excellent um, product to brush your teeth with. You can actually, as a little caveat, you can take baking soda, mixing it with charcoal and a little bit of water and brush your teeth with that and it's a natural whitener of your teeth. Okay, but for the lemons, you just mix it with some baking soda for cleaning your teeth and cleansing, cleansing the teeth. It will feel refreshed and it will taste good because the lemon adds to it. If you have sensitive teeth, be cautious on doing it because, and don't leave it on um, for very long because it can, you know, cause your enamel to break open. Um, and make sure you rinse it well. The other use is as a deodorant under your arms. Cut it in half, take your shower, wash, if your armpits are dirty and you've got sweat and bacteria, nothing's going to help with the odor, okay? But as long as you're drinking lots of water and you're on the corrective diet, actually you will stop having body odor under your armpit. But you actually just take the lemon and right directly on, on, your, um, on your armpit. Yeah, it's wet at first a little bit, but it dries off really quick and, it, and it's a very good um, deodorant. Um, the other thing is, is if somebody has, is, has an acidic body, in other words, they're not on a corrective diet, 
and you put the lemon on your, on your underarm, it's going to burn. So f by the time you finish your three-day um, detox with the lemon detox, your body is already on the road to being alkaline, especially those of you that have been here for a couple of days and have been eating the alkaline food. Um, your body is already starting to heal and you're already alkaline, so this wouldn't be a problem. But for somebody just coming off the street who has not alkalinized their body, it might burn under their, under their armpits. Okay, questions on that? We're good, huh? Okay, another one for use outside the body is with insect bites. Um, everybody who, buddy who goes camping, which our family enjoys doing, um, take some lemons with you. And if you have the lemons and you get stung by a, or a, a mosquito bite bites you, or a, you can just, and you know it's itching, this is for, for the itch that comes there, you just take and just rub this on it. Just rub the lemon on it and it will really help with, with the itch. Outside, right here, inside, right here, the lemon. Just cut it open and put it on there. You can also, if you take the lemon and if you have a, um, you know, a bee sting, charcoal works great for that too, but if you have a bee sting, but the part where it's really itching, if you have these that are cold and you put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and you have them frozen, you can just slap it right on there and um, it, can, it can help relieve that. Um, I like making the charcoal more for that one, but the lemon also works. But the thing with lemon, it is, it is antibacterial, it's anti-itch, it's antimicrobial. So it's a natural antibiotic, so to prevent infection. Now somebody might say, oh my goodness, well I've got a bee sting, I've got a mosquito bite or whatever, and I scratched it and it's open, isn't the lemon gonna burn up? Yeah, it'll burn, but it's already itching so bad you can't stand it anyway, right? So it'll quit burning a little bit, and it'll, it's, remember it's antibacterial. So it works really well on the outside of the, bo um, the body. But again, remember, if you're outside and you've got a mosquito bite or a spider bite that's itching, and you put a lot of lemon on it, don't go out and hold it in the, sun, in the sunlight again, okay? That's that catch-22 situation. So you can leave it on, but then you might want to put a, a sweater or a, you know, something like this over top of it, or just sit in the shade for a while, all right? So that's for insect bites. Okay, the other one is take and juice the lemons, strain them well, and take either half a cup or one cup of, of the lemon, this is lemon juice again now, and you can add it to your laundry. It boosts the laundry, it will take out the odor, and it washes out completely. It doesn't leave a residue. And if you use it with white clothes, it actually whitens them. It will help to whiten the, the, um, the white clothes. If you're gonna use it on dark clothes, which can easily be done, you must fill the machine first, put the lemon juice in it, and make sure it's agitated, or you'd have to take like a big gallon jug of water, put the lemon juice in it, and then make sure you mix it in so that it doesn't, you don't pour it directly on the lemon. Because if you put, or on the laundry, sorry. Because if you take like one cup of lemon juice and you pour it right on something dark, you might end up with a little, little discoloration there. But for whitening clothes, that works out, actually it works out very well for that. Uh, we already talked about the refrigerator and, um, and then I think everybody probably knows that lemons stop oxidation, right? If you have a, uh, an avocado and you don't want it to turn brown, just you know, squeeze some lemon juice or take the lemon slices again and just put it right on there and that will prevent them from um, turning brown. Okay, the other thing that you can do with lemons is what I did here is I took, this is the lemons from this morning, part of them. Okay, this is breakfast lemons and this was, well, the early morning lemons and then this is the start of the little bit later. So I took actually quite a few of these. I probably maybe shouldn't have put quite as many in here for um, demonstration purposes. But this is just the lemon rinds is all it is, okay? The outside of what you left after, after um, juicing. And I cut them in pieces. Now, you can cut them in smaller pieces. That's fine. And you'll take and put it in your Vitamix with... You know, a little bit less, but we're going to check and see if we know. And I've got the wrong lid. Let's see if this one works. We hope it does. Um, and then we're just going to blend it up. Always be careful when you open it because you may get a bath. Okay, this looks 
looks pretty good. Because we have the lid that was, that's, sorry about that. Then you take and you would strain it, all right? And if you have a smaller strainer, it's going to be better. But strain out. And you can see that it's pretty clear as it comes out. It's, it's lemon water is what it is. So it ends up being about half as or equal amounts of the, the lemon pulp that you put in here to water. You need to make it so it's, you can at least pour it out. This is great for polishing furniture. You take this, and if you put, make it thicker, so add less water than this, um, take it and you can put it in a cloth and for polishing furniture. You've heard of lemon pledge? Yes, okay. It's commercialized, but it's lemon, Barb. Can you use it to clean hardwood floors? You can, you can. And you can use this, remember, we said that lemons are what? They're antibacterial, they're antimicrobial, or they're anti-inflammatory. Also, I haven't mentioned the anti-inflammatory yet. Okay? So this you can use on your kitchen counters. It's not going to be sticky because you're mixing it with water. This is great for cleaning in the bathroom, and it'll make your bathroom smell like lemons. Okay? So putting it in the toilet, cleaning the toilet, getting under the ring of it, putting it in the shower, cleaning along the bottom, the bottom of the shower. Um, and is it good to drink too? You can, but for this one here, make sure that you've washed your, you've washed your lemon rinds, okay? Okay, so it's still coming out, but I'm going to do this because I want to show you. If I let it go some more and drain, I would end up with, it's pretty thick, all right, but you don't throw this away either. All right, it can end up really thick. Um, I'm putting that back on there. So what you would do is, after you have drained it and you're, you know, use a spoon and strain it out, just put it in a jar, seal the jar, or put the, put the lid on it, and you can store it in the refrigerator for several days and clean the bathroom, clean the toilet, you know, wash your counter. It's a natural disinfectant. You can use it. It's, it when just put the lid on it, and it smells really good, too, okay? You can drink it. You asked about drinking it. Remember, this is made out of the lemon rind, so it's not going to be as sweet as the lemon juice is, but it has a lot of properties in the lemon rind. The lemon rind is actually um, more powerful for an anti-inflammatory even, okay? So it is, it is actually, it's, it's very good for that. Um, and it smells good too. So by the time we're done here, we'll have, so if somebody wants to take it, they can, they can take it to their room and clean their toilet, I guess. Make it smell like lemon. <laughs> it works well, okay? But you want to mix it up into, in, the, in the, um, your mixer, your blender, Vitamix. So it's kind of like the consistency of a smoothie. The thicker it is, then you would, it's more for polishing furniture, all right? Or for putting in the toilet, either one. It does not leave a scum. It does not leave a, a film, even though it's oil, but because of, for some reason, when you blend it and you mix it with water, it washes clean and it works well. Okay? So, um, and you can, you can um, like I said, put it in the refrigerator and keep it for one or two weeks. Here at the center, actually, I don't, I don't remember which month it was, but we, had, we made a whole bunch of it and we just kept it in, in the refrigerator um, for the whole time. And people just came and took some as they wanted and threw them to clean the bathroom, but it does. It smells nice. It smells good. So now, like I said, you wouldn't throw this pulp away because what you can do with the inside of this now is you can use it for medicinal purposes. And of all the things that I, you know, and I appreciate with lemon and everything, um, the one I have used the most is the one I'm going to talk about now um, and do a demonstration with. You can either use this pulp for it because remember, if you have a need for it, you can always take and you can juice the lemons and freeze the juice, right? If you're going to use it for, you know, just putting on salads or something, um, if you're needing the, the lemon rinds. Um, but you could also take this and freeze this if you're going to use it at a later time. But you can either use this or you can take lemons such as I have here now because I took them out of there, and you would need to cut them up. And they don't, they, you know, they're very easy to cut. But just cut them up because what you're going to do, then you're, you're going to make something for inhalation. 
It's cold season, flu season, but some people also have um, bronchitis, might get pneumonia, it might even be asthma. If a person has asthma, dehydration, dairy, and um, wheat. Cut those out and it'll be, you'll be better. Cut two out, increase the water if, if somebody has asthma. Um, but you can take and you're going to, we're gonna make an, um, an inhalation for upper, upper respiratory tract. So I'm gonna step out just a minute and go get something and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have asked Pat if she would mind being a volunteer for me, and she has kindly consented. Like I said, I have used this so many times. I actually need another pink chair, if you can bring one up. Um, many times at my house with my grandkids, with my kids, um, with people, clients who come to my house um, for the evaluations and, you know, for, for treatment and whatever. Um, and as a nurse in the hospital, we put people in a, used to put them in what's called a croup tent, but we give them the moist, you know, all that moist heat and whatever. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to have you sit sideways so you can see. Typically, you would have a person such as Pat come and sit, and it would be good if they were in their underclothes. All right. No, I didn't ask you to do that. She looked at me. huh? <laughs> in her underclothes, but then you would have her with like a bathrobe or something on. And the reason that you would have them in their underclothes is because after you do the 20 minute treatment, or 30 minutes, but 20 minutes is usually sufficient, um, you would want to have you know cold towels, and, and I'm not gonna do that either, and really do a friction rub, but you wanna have them go to the bedroom and do a friction rub on them and have them lay down and go to sleep because they can, if they're not feeling well, the respirations, aren't, um, they're not breathing well, um, they're going to be tired. And this will make you tired when you're done. So you would take a couple blankets. I only brought one here. We're going to put that right there first. And make sure that they are bundled up. Hold on. This is just the lemons that I have cut in fourths. Okay, so I've already quartered them. And I put them in, I put in as much water, a little bit, just a little bit more water than um, what was the lemons in the pot. And I let them come to a boil, and they boiled, I don't know, maybe five minutes or whatever. Now, because I've had the lid off, I've taken away my steam. But then what you'd have the person do is, this is hot now, so be careful. Okay. You want to make sure that they don't burn their face, all right? And their face needs to get up higher towards it. So. Um, at my, for my son, I actually put another pot under here and then sat it on it, sat the, the lemon on it. I had him sit in a chair, and he's like 6'4", so he's very tall. But I had two chairs because he wasn't going to sit on the floor. So I took and I put another pot or a container under there, which raised this up so that he could lean over. Because what you need to do is you need to make sure they're warm. This, this one here is for warmth, Okay. And I did tell her that she's going to be hot and sweaty, okay? But then, because it's farther away, you need to make a, like a tent. And give them a spoon if they're not feeling, if they're feeling okay. And they would come over and just inhale. Now, the important thing to remember on this is that to keep telling them, you know, and staying by and say, are you okay? Because if they're already not feeling well and they're really congested up here, you know, you, can, you just don't feel good anyway if you have an upper respiratory tract infection or you're getting pneumonia or something. But as she inhales, just tell her, just take some deep breaths. Be by her or the person there. And if they start feeling a little funny, just say, are you okay? And, you know, give them a cool cloth for their forehead, and that can help too. Um, but just taking some deep breaths. Remind them, it can be sometimes when you don't feel well, but you feel well enough, we have the philosophy that more is better. More is better in many cases, but to, get, to think that you need to get closer to the steam is not better, all right? What you want them to do is to be inhaling and tip, using a really long spoon. But if they're able, they can sit here once in a while and stir it. If they, because if she keeps over like this 
and she has the spoon in her hand, she can stir it and that brings more of the steam up. Now because this hasn't been boiling for a little while, I did it before class, there's not as much steam that will come up. But make sure they don't get very close because the steam can be very hot and it can burn them. So you have to be very careful with that. So you wouldn't want to leave somebody alone when they're doing it. So how are you doing? You okay? I dropped my spoon. You dropped your spoon. Okay. That's why we need a big longer spoon. Um, but I can already feel here, of course, that it's, it's very warm. It's coming up here. Um, and this is where it's good if you have another blanket to, to put over her to keep her warm. Because remember, ideally, she's in her underclothes. That's ideally. If you were to do this on yourself, which you can, absolutely, you can do it on yourself. Just remember that after the 20 minutes, it's important that you go and you get, you know, get some cold water. And why do you suppose you want cold water? Close the pores, that's right. And what is the goal? There's a couple goals of what we're doing here. What would, does anybody know what those would be? Okay, we're, first of all, we're opening up the, the sinus, okay, her nasal cavity, so she breathes better. But she's also sweating. And when we sweat, what do we do? We're detoxing. We're getting rid of toxins. So now her skin, because she's got two blankets on her and she's got all this steam coming up, so we've put her in a little homemade lemon steam bath is what it is. So now she's sweating and all these toxins are here. So you need to wash off the toxins because our skin is the biggest, it's the most you know, um, vast organ. It's just going to reabsorb those toxins. That's why it's so important every morning that you take a shower in the morning because we sweat out about a quart of fluid every night that we're breathing and sweating. And in the morning, if you don't wash that off, it's just going to go right back into your skin and plug your pores. So showering in the morning is important. So when she's done or when you're done with yourself, it would be important that you take and you, you know, wash yourself off. I do not recommend going in and taking a shower because if you go in and take a shower, first of all, you're going to expose yourself and you're going to get a chill. And by the time she's finished, because she would have the blanket wrapped all the way around her, two blankets, you know, and something on her feet. She would be bundled warm. And if you have to get in the shower and then it's cool, she could get a chill. So after she is done with this, and every few minutes just saying, how are you doing? Okay. Not bad at all, huh? Nope. All right. And how did it smell? Not good. I like lemon. It's good. Oh, and you see nice. how red her face is? All right. It's, it's nice and pink and red. Okay. So when she comes out of this, then you would not do what I just did, first of all. So she would come out, and you would want to take... So let's just take her right out here. So we're going to take you right out, Pat. So we take her out. Okay. Take her out. Keep her wrapped up like this, the blankets around her, and rush her off into the bedroom where, where she can you know, do, a, do the, the cold wash on there and then also be able to crawl into bed. I actually have a friend in Tennessee who had company coming for um, Christmas. And she sent me a text, and she says, Debbie, she said, I have got all the kids and her, the she had one daughter-in-law, um, the oldest boy's married, had the daughter-in-law coming, plus in-laws from both sides, and it was Christmas morning, and she said, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know. My throat hurts. She said, I'm so congested. So I told her, quick, get the lemons, do yourself a treatment, put the cayenne poultice on your bottom of your feet, and, you know, a few of these other things, do the, how to do the lemon or the, the cold and flu bomb. And then she sent me a picture of her tucked away in bed, her husband tucked away in bed. And um, she felt so much better by the afternoon. And um, she actually was up and finished cooking, cooking Christmas. Um, so she would, Pat would, I would go to the bedroom, get washed off, and then crawl into bed and rest. Because any time you do a treatment, um, it's very important, very important that you get the rest that the body needs. There's something else that's very important that I forgot to do, which is the most important thing is that when you get everything ready before you start the treatment, whether it's on yourself or somebody else, you must always pray. Because when we use natural remedies, who's the one that, that invented natural remedies? It wasn't me. It wasn't the wellness center here. It was God, right? There, that's why, you know, God has given us lemons. He's given us things. And if we want to, him to bless what we're doing, then we need to, to pray before we do a treatment. Um, and when you pray, then you put it in God's hands. It's not about Debbie coming in and doing something for Pat. 
It's not about Pat saying, oh, I can just do this, I'm fine. It's not about that. It's that higher power because it's not all about me. Sometimes in this world we think it's all about me and number one. Um, but it's really not all about that. So then we would just tell, take Pat to her bedroom and lay her down in her bed and tell her to have a good rest and, that will, and be sure to go in and check in on her though, okay? And if you're at home, you just go in and you know, take and lay down and bundle up for, and it doesn't have to be hours and hours that you rest, even 15, 20 minutes. It's enough to get the body, thank you, Pat. Should we give her a hand of a round of applause here for being such a good, a good, a good little uh, practice person for me. Um, but it doesn't have to be hours and hours that you stay in, um, that you stay in bed afterwards. But the person has to stay in bed long enough so that they can do what's called recovery, okay? So the other thing inside for the, for the uses for lemon now, um, lemon in general, um, is that lemon, like we said, is a very powerful for detox. So that is what you are doing now is a lemon detox. Okay, some people call it a lemon fast because you're not eating, but it's really a detox, a powerful. Some people might experience diarrhea from it. Um, some people might, you know, it can do a lot of things in your body. But it's also a um, anti-inflammatory and it's also a powerful diuretic. So people will notice that their face is getting smaller, they might, you know, urinate a little bit more. Um, but it helps, and that's why it helps with joints. After people have been on a lemon detox for three or four days, they'll be like, oh, I really do feel better. Oh, I really have more energy. It's because of the powerful effects that lemon can have on our body. Um, the other thing with lemon is that lemon has just enough sugar in it, just enough sugar in it, that it actually tricks your brain. So that when you are doing a lemon detox, you know, there's different types of being hungry. Okay? We can be hungry here where our stomach is just growling and we just think, oh, I'm, I'm hungry here. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're hungry either. When you're really hungry is when you see food or smell food and your stomach is growling and you just start salivating, Pavlov, so to speak. But there's also hunger here. First time I ever did a detox, and I think it was either for four or five or six days, whatever, and I, after like day four I was like, oh, I'm hungry. And then I was asked, where are you hungry? And I'm like, oh. It's here, okay, because we like to eat. But there's just enough sugar in it that it tricks your brain into thinking that you have, that you, you have been eating on that. So, you know, for the lemon, there's a lot of uses for it. Um, what I don't know is if a person was to take the rinds, and I'm guessing it would work just fine, and freeze them, because it's not as though you do a lemon detox every day. Um, but if you would take them and, you know, cut them and freeze them, and then at a later time when you needed to, you know, somebody with an upper respiratory tract or, you know, asthma or, you know, they're having trouble breathing, you could just put them out because the important thing is you're getting the, the lemon, the smell that comes. Um, you can also not with somebody who's having um, asthma, not, but otherwise you could take and you could put, if you have eucalyptus leaves or eucalyptus oil, you could add a little bit of the, the eucalyptus to that also and that will just potentiate it. So. Um, are there any questions? The only other thing I forgot also is lemon tea. Very good for a sore throat, for soothing. Um, just, just straight lemon tea. Make it a little bit stronger. If you want to put a little bit of honey in it, that's fine too, just a little bit to make it a little bit more palatable. Um, and that lemon tea can come, as you were asking, can, you, can come from the solution here too. It doesn't have to be the lemon juice. You can take it and you know, blend it up and grind it. It's going to be stronger, remember, but the lemon rind has even more potent effects than, than the juice inside. But here, please, at the Wellness Center, don't eat the lemons. Um, you, know, you need to have the juice and strain it, and you strain it so that there's no pulp, because if you have lots of pulp, it's going to start digestion, and you'll be hungry here, all right? So, um, but you can also make, um, make a tea. Um, just boiling up the pulp and just sipping it. It's very good and it's refreshing. Are there any questions? And if anybody wants to come up and have a smell of that when we're finished, we can. Otherwise, thank you so much.